I'm Karthik and I love traveling. More so to beaches on the traveler circuit where you meet a world village. Beaches that are some way between being just discovered and being overcrowded with a nice traveler vibe. It helps me know the world better. That's what inspires me to pack my bags and head out and look out for stories to tell or for stories to immerse myself. This time it's the latter that makes my mind active on reliving a little story told a few years back in Thailand. It's been about 20 years since the beach the book was released and uh, about 17 years since it was made into a movie by Danny Boyle which had Leonardo DiCaprio in the lead. It's a fascinating story on discovering and maintaining paradise with a nice community of travelers who exchange stories. I love the beach where they live in the movie. but i also love the spirit of adventure in the trail they take to reach the beach while the movie was largely filmed in maya bay near phuket in western thailand the beach trail was actually on the eastern side near the gulf of thailand so do you like what you saw now do you also want to do the beach trail like the way i did I'm sure you do. Let me tell you why we did the beach trail. It started some time back, I think um uh, in 2008 when I saw the movie. I wanted to do the exact same trail. But it takes time, doesn't it, to, you know, to find the right uh, price, to find the right partners to go ahead with. But what really struck me was the fact that uh, this movie there is a sense of, you know, there's a backpacker uh, spirit of inquiry and awe that Uh, one has for people places and customs and you know trying to understand why things work the way they do in different places that is travel that's what differentiates itself from you know being a tourist and being a traveler where you're you know more cognizant of the surroundings that you're in and wanting to know more about your place or wanting to you know seeking more adventure the beach trail exactly tries to encapsulate all of that on a rather safe tour we we didn't go uh, swimming in the ocean to go find the coveted land nevertheless it was a beautiful beach trail that we did and uh, we had a lot of fun so i will be narrating all of what we did over the course of the next couple of weeks and a couple of uh, episodes so i hope you're going to be uh, supporting us in our first film and watching us and letting us know uh, what you liked about us Usually what happens is I am constantly in this research mode. Yeah, what are the cheapest rates I'm getting from Chennai to let's say KL or Chennai to um, uh, Bangkok or some other place like Den Pasar. But then uh, there are easier ways to do it instead of manually searching each place. You could or uh, go for the option where you can search from just from Chennai what are the cheapest fares available on a given weekend or you could you know just see for one destination which is the cheapest month that you get usually both these features are are pretty valuable for the traveler and i use it on sky scanner and that's where we you know booked our tickets this time to uh, get to uh, bangkok and we were happy that we were traveling for the songkran festival on the trip with me this time were two of my friends abhinandan and vikram abhinandan was a founder at a startup while vikram used to help me with a lot of photography projects but otherwise works as a data scientist our trip starts now with us getting all aboard on air asia the uh, mushroom soup is extremely tasty on uh, air asia we ordered the mushroom soup and uh, some hyderabadi biryani how authentic how thai isn't it yeah but yeah keep us in our comfort zone you see that you see that they have not let any area of the flight be completely empty it's good for them uh, as long as they're earning money air asia is earning money and we get good rates we're definitely happy our air asia flight was on time and we reached at 3:30 am it took us about an hour at the immigration and once we were out on the highway because that's where you can catch an uber and not fall prey to some of the touts in terms of the false taxis Uh, we got an Uber and we kind of raced our way um, all the way uh, right to Rambutri Road, 
It's a road that's parallel to Khaosan Road. That's where we were to board our Lumpraya bus. It was a beautiful morning. So that's it. We are at Bangkok in Khaosan Road. Uh, we're waiting for our bus at Lumpraya. We're seeing that the city is pretty busy at uh, 5.40 in the morning. Must be about 4.10 uh, 4 in India. And that's our bus, the Lumpraya bus. We're on a luxury bus on the way to Kopenhagen and uh, Sawadika. And saying Sawadika, we got into the bus. It had a pretty narrow staircase and I remember going in this green light. It was very tough to climb with all of the luggage, but we had some great views due to the big windows that were there on the bus on either sides. And uh, we had a pretty awesome time looking at a physical map and trying to find out which places to go and which places to avoid. So that's how our trip started there. And um, in a short while, uh, because it was a nice air-conditioned bus, it was completely normal that uh, given we hadn't slept enough the previous night, all of us went into snooze mode. And when I woke up a couple of hours later, I just wanted to see where we were. Maybe I thought uh, I should ask the driver. So I walked up. Everyone was asleep. And where was the driver? I had actually forgotten that this was a double-decker bus. And I just went back to sleep after that. We then got up a couple of hours later to see beautiful vistas of blue seas and uh, a beach right next to the bus. It had been about uh, six hours of travel from uh, Khaosan Road all the way to Chumphon. We arrived there at uh, the Matapon Pier, which otherwise is also known as the Lumpraya Pier. Very beautiful and uh, immediately we just posed and then started to get walking on the long plank. The place is uh, actually a World War II bunker but uh, right now it, it is a tourist place. It has a couple of beautiful beaches and a waterfall, but we didn't uh, have so much time to spend there. Most of our time was uh, just spent in taking some photographs of the beautiful plank. And uh, most of our uh, energies were directed towards getting inside the ship because we wanted the best seats in the house, which was basically not the air conditioned seats, but the seats actually on top of the deck facing the sun. That's exactly how you travel. You're traveling on the sea. Why would you want air conditioning? So we had natural air conditioning from all of the wind there. It was a beautiful sight to see as the ship set sail, watching all those green trees, green waters. And then we saw the water color changing to blue and then back to green. So it was like this traffic signal, you know, green, blue, green. And we just had just these colors to see. And on the once the ship started, it was a little rugged in the sense that the waters felt a little choppy but the wind was uh, hitting us in our face and it was a very strong wind. We saw a lot of islands in the distance and uh, we hoped that in our beach trip or the beach trail we would set forth on some of those beautiful islands with palm trees, white sands, the image of water, you know the ship cutting across the water, cutting those blue and making the whites was you know one of our standout images. That's Vikram with his hat on. He had a lot of trouble drinking water with his hat. Um, and uh, he actually covered the wind with his hat just like this lady is in this picture and Vikram's hat unfortunately went away because of the wind it just flew away into the sea so that's a little something we didn't want to deposit or you know give away but uh, Vikram had to and we saw some very colorful people with sunglasses with uh, the right beach slippers and with nice messages uh, on our ship and uh, all of that color was uh, now getting ahead at uh, Kotao, which was the next stop where people were getting off. There's a beautiful place called Konangyuan, which is a viewpoint and uh, it has a lovely sandbar which is right in the middle of uh, the sea next to a mountain. So this was our last stop before we finally reached Kopangan. We reached there um, at about 5ish in the evening and then um, uh, once we reached there, took a, a taxi. Taxis are pretty expensive. We yeah. had no option but to take one all the way to Jaya Hostel. And once we got into a shared taxi, uh, it was beautiful. Beautiful watching the sea from the top of the mountain where we were driving. Kopenhagen actually has a few mountains and uh, we have to drive through those mountains, go up and then go down. And that's where our hostel was at the extreme end of the beach. We were staying at uh, Jaya Hostel, one of those nice feel-good places. We just cooled and we cooled ourselves with some uh, milkshakes and fruit shakes and we prepared for the places to go visit in the night, which was Hadrin Beach. There was a nice fire performance, but that's coming up in the second edition. We had a fun time bringing this to you. I hope you liked what you saw. 
please do share your comments in the comment section and uh, if you did like our video please spread the love share it with your friends and also let us know till then we will see you in the next episode hoping to see you again bye bye